Do you have a small space? Maybe you don't want people in your business like that. Or you're like me, you like to travel with an altar. Today is the day you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you will have ideas for each and every single one of those options. Spirituality can be difficult sometimes, so if you want spiritual tips, esoteric or traditional, then go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and uh, please hit the notification bell so you never miss a tip or a trick to be closer to the divine. As a part of my practice, I ask each one of my students and my clients to ensure that they have an altar because it is essential to your spiritual growth. Those who have took the time and did the follow through, they have communicated to me that the moment they set up the altar and begin connecting with it, that they experienced a connection and a feeling that they have never experienced before. They have also boasted of increased intuition and also an increased ability to hear spiritually. I can tell you from my personal experience that an altar and having a place for uh, me to congregate and communicate with the divine has been essential for me to get where I am right now. So I'm so excited to present this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I go in to show you a couple of things, I want to make sure that I just reiterate some things that uh, you should have on every single altar. Number one, you should have some type of cloth, preferably white, but if it's not an ancestor altar, you can be a little bit more creative. You also want to make sure that you have some type of fire element. In most cases, this would be a candle. Then you want to make sure that you have incense and something alive, preferably a plant or um, a, a flowers. Anything you have on your altar past that is land yap, okay? For those of y'all who don't know that word, that's a Louisiana word. Uh, shout out to my voodoos, my Louisiana voodoos out there. Okay, dokily. All right, so let me first just quickly show you before I actually show you some altars, some little things that you can use. I am a box hound, so if uh, I see a box and it's real sturdy, it is going to get put up. So here's a little small one you can uh, throw stuff into. Um, I love this one. It came with uh, some of my oils. I love it has a little snap uh, magnet here and that helps you when you travel to keep all your stuff in there. So this is a nice little box. No way I was throwing that away. Plus if you travel with your oils. Um, this is a little gift uh, tin set that someone gave me. So that's great. In here, I have um, a sigil that I'll, I'll work with. I have candles here, uh, bath salts, and of course, you always wanna make sure that you have a lid. So, and of course, I don't travel with this one, so I just take this out when I need it and I'm doing that specific work. Obviously, the last box, pretty freaking simple. You can just put it uh, in here, um, put your altar in the box. All right, so why don't we uh, go ahead and look at some altars. This is one of my favorite examples, especially if you live in a small space. Um, also, this is another one. If you don't want nobody in your business, this is a bread box. So I got this actually at the Goodwill. Really um, good wood. You can paint this if you want it to. What I like here, I have uh, just some little candle holders. And then you can easily pop these suckers out if you want to. I have a chapelet that I made. Let's see, um, just a little, with some little bath salts and things inside here. I have a whole incense holder here. Um, let's see, what is this that I've in here? All right, some oils and some liquor, depending on um, the type of work that I have going on. So yeah, this is a great altar for small spaces because you can put all sorts of things in here and then pull them out or you can make everything if you're not going to move it. You can make it just like this. Ritual time. Time to do some spirit work. <laughs> 
plenty of different examples there for a small space. And this can be painted and done all kind of little fun stuff. So I neglected to mention on that bread box, if you buy anything, you actually, if you buy anything, you should always smoke it down or maybe clean it with some Florida water. Just kind of get your, let it sit out a little bit to kind of air out and pick up your essence before you add your stuff in. So I thought I might uh, throw that out. So here is a very discreet box. I also found this at the Goodwill. It's so beautiful and it's orange and this is very discreet because it just looks like a great jewelry box. And also if you wanted to, you could get one with a little lock so nobody can get in it but you. So I pull this up, I leave this out on my dresser and then I have some great things. So I have uh, some tarot cards if I wanna use for prayer. Um, I have this little um, bowl, which I'm going to show you what I use for that. So freaking cool. Um, I have, if I use this for traveling for whatever reason, which I wouldn't because everything would, or I would wrap everything up. This is actually salt. And then you can put that in there and use it during your ritual. So that's not hanging out either. And again, like I said in the last one, this is one of those little things came with some lipstick or something in it. Put your candles i love this and this is an oshun altar so of course i have some honey in here i have a beautiful candle and uh sage something of course a little statue of oshun and something living i have in here and i love this as well Ooh, um, this is actually some really tiny little roller balls. Yeah, a little tiny little roller ball and it has some oils that I made and I can still use that in prayer um, Again without having my stuff all out and open, you know, it depends on what it is a little holder. So um, I'm gonna show you that in the next one Okay, so here's actually one of my favorite ideas so here is something that you can do if you don't want to buy something that's really cool that I want to show you. All right, so here you can, I just cut off an incense, so that's cool. Here's my candle here. Um, I also have some honey in case I need to do some work for Mama Oshun. Of course, because I'm traveling, I'm more than sure that I will need some type of protection. So this is actually a, a fiery wall of protection, which I will use and just sprinkle around the space if I'm going into. I showed you this valve already for prayer. If I wanna use some oils, I can go ahead and do that. And this is one of my favorite things right here. I love these. I actually learned about these from another uh, YouTuber. And I was like, oh, this is way better than actually um, just trying to cut down incense. So here, I love these. These are actually incense matches. And so you just light it. Never blow out fire, just so you know. And then you can set it right in your tin. And it will, oh, this smells so good, guys. This is cinnamon. And I bought these on Amazon. If I made room or had a bigger tin, then I could take some herbs. Maybe I wanna take a, a herbal shower. Somebody's really messing with me and I need to take a herbal shower while I'm traveling. And then I just have this little white cloth. So hey, what is some cool stuff that you've ever did to put in an altar? You know, there's so many different ideas that you can do. Um, also make sure you look at some of my other videos, talks about what you do in an altar, why you should set an altar up, and I also have some specific information about ancestor veneration so you want to make sure that you look for that again i have a guide that i've included um, of incense and candles so you can be able to do that if you want to meet with me one-on-one -on -one, i have a COVID deal on all readings right now you can get a reading for 75 dollars through the end of january and that is a 50 dollar savings so you can't beat that it's a bone or card reading whichever you would like be sure to check me out on any of my other social media platforms. Peace. Love y'all.